While it's an important part of like everyone's lives, creating your own purpose, growing up and figuring out just who you are is worth it, but it's difficult, right? With the choices you must make and the paralyzing uncertainty that always precedes it, how does a game invoke and explore this complicated feeling? The first hour or so of Sable focuses on the close connections to the people in her home tribe and her anxious excitement of leaving to go on her gliding, a uh, coming of age journey for young folk to discover who they are by leaving home, helping others, and collecting masks that represent potential paths to pursue in the future. At the end, a single mask must be chosen to show who you are and what you'd want to do with your life. Handcrafted open worlds tend to be reserved for like big AAA video games for many reasons, but I think Shedworks, together with the contributions of a tiny dev team, have somehow managed to use the strengths of an open world to create something incredibly memorable and relaxed. I've really wanted to talk about Sable since I heard about it years ago, as the things that really stood out to me was the chill gameplay, stylish presentation, and most of all, the heartfelt writing. Come in. Sable is a game very much focused on self-discovery and the wonders of exploration. To me, the quests are the most interesting way it explores these themes in-game, as it really, really takes advantage of how video games can uniquely tell stories. There's not really a main quest or something that's more important to focus on like most open-world games. Every quest is presented as equally important, and it deliberately doesn't make the reward clear. The closest thing I've seen to Sable's loose questing is a uh, RuneScape, and only because they both don't really have main quests and it's all little stories and adventures you choose to do. This type of progression isn't something I've seen very often, probably because it's really hard to design, but I love it when it's done well. If the game won't force a reason to do the quest by like dangling the reward in your face or by having it be mandatory to progress, you must find and create your own reasons to keep playing, especially because you're told pretty early on that you can just beat the game whenever you're ready. The story is about Sable's journey, but the gameplay, by doing all of this, asks to make it your journey of self-discovery as well. And as fancy as that sounds, it doesn't really need to be a deep reason. If your purpose is to collect all the clothes to make yourself look absolutely baller, then yeah, why not? I mean, clothing is a form of self-expression, so that reason still fits within the game's themes or fighting all the colors and bike parts, which actually affects how it drives. It can get stupidly fast later on, making it fucking fly off of hills, which, yeah, made it a bit harder to control, but it's just too fun to make me care about that. Or hell, maybe your purpose is to catch all of the fish and bugs and critters and stuff like that. Yes, it's got fishing. But I gave up after it took hours to find a common pebble eye fish I needed for a quest. I looked online and others had the same issue, but I had a mission and I wasn't backing down to a fish, so I kept trying and trying and trying and... In a row. What the fuck? The game does a lot with seemingly very little. Driving, running, climbing, gliding, and the little bits of puzzle solving take up the entirety of the 10 to 20 hours it'll take to complete. The simplicity makes it relaxing and it is solid, but the stuff I found really cool and interesting about the whole game aren't here. The freedom to do whatever in any order and explore anywhere you desire, as backwards as it sounds, makes guiding the player towards interesting locations and quests more important. Sable doesn't force or convince the player through gameplay, it's a bit more sneaky and uses the visuals to do that. So, we've just done the intro and we're out in the world. Now, what looks most interesting here? 
the uh, nothing wall on the left or the striking rock formations on the right. So we probably want to turn right and then what immediately sticks out? Uh, to me, it's the little tower in the middle of nowhere. You see stairs, you go up them, and you see a big balloon that we could probably climb up to. We go there, learn that we can buy maps from these guys, and in the distance, a busy camp sticks out. So we go there and can pick up quests, buy stuff, and start to slowly understand the game better, despite it not really telling you much. You are given a quest to go to the camp from the start, but it makes you hold down a button if you want to be told where your next objective is. This pushes you away from mindlessly following the directions and towards embracing the joy of exploration while fully taking in the visuals. It guides you to new areas and keeps you playing with interesting stuff on the horizon. It also helps that Sable is a fucking beautiful game, my god. It's got such a unique style with thin black outlines and bold colors being enough to convey everything instead of like regular textures or something. It plays around with color, it's not all warm desert oranges and yellows, giving each area a distinct look and vibe. I personally love the Badlands, a desert area with cloud-reaching rocks bridged by the bones of long-dead creatures is just fucking cool and overall fun to climb. The few buildings up top are connected by little boats that float across the skies to each other according to the people there, and man, it's just incredible. The Sodic Wastes is fascinating to me because of what it doesn't do. I don't think I've seen an open world game use the triangle rule, then not apply it in one area to do something pretty cool. A uh, 2017 presentation from Nintendo revealed they designed Breath of the Wild's uh, world by using uh, triangle-shaped hills and mountains literally everywhere to hide stuff. This rule makes tall, important structures stick out more. Going over or around triangles naturally reveals interesting locations, rewarding your curiosity, and the world feels bigger because you don't know what could be around the corner. Altogether, making exploration more exciting and almost addictive. But this is a mostly lifeless wasteland. It's flat, there's nothing to hide around the corner. It may be a huge space, but by breaking game design rules, it feels so much emptier and smaller than it really is. And that's really creative. The audio does an equally wonderful job to pull you into this world. A ton of work has gone into making everything sound nice with tiny details you may not notice, but certainly feel like, subtle changes to the music when inside caves, outdoors, or indoors, and also into the strange, almost alien soundscapes during more surreal moments. There's no danger, no way to fail no matter what you do, so I just sit down to just chill and take it in for a bit. Maybe even load up the great photo mode and just have a good time. Sable's fantastic presentation fits well with the themes within, but to figure out why, let's look out of the game. The visuals are heavily inspired by Jean Giraud's art, I hope that was right, most well known for his work on comics under the name of Mobius. I'm not really familiar with his stuff, and scouring the internet for interesting info with sources is a bit of a challenge when so much of it isn't in English, but I mean, everything I could find looked really cool. Uh, the guy is an unbelievably influential artist, inspiring, working with practically everyone if you can think of them. Sable emulates Mobius' style and gives it new life by combining it with her own ideas for gameplay, music, and sound, which are out of reach for comic books normally. Doing that well requires an understanding and appreciation for the work itself, yeah, but also discovering why you enjoy it so much, what specifically causes that for you, and how you're capable of sharing that feeling to others through your own creations. It's why I think the best parodies slash spoofs are generally made with a love for what it's mocking. I think Shedworks had to discover what Mobius' art meant to them during development and why to make Sable bring out similar feelings to his art. The music has gone through a similar journey during development as well. Composed by Michelle Zahner, the head musician of Japanese Breakfast? Michelle was chosen by Shedwork specifically because she hadn't worked on a game soundtrack before, so she could bring something new, and the visuals of Sable really caught her eye. 
She mentioned wanting to bring out the same strong feelings she has for Secret of Mana's soundtrack, a game with great personal significance to her growing up. So she had to discover what this music meant to her and why to create songs fitting Sable's themes. I think it's fascinating to see this sort of like chain of inspiration inspiring inspiration and how the game's themes kind of apply to the development of the game as well uh, to the final product we all get to play. This is the most crack pipe analysis I've done here, but screw it, it's fun and even if I'm off and I'm just guessing, that's okay. It's just a real fucking good game. There's a lot I really like about... The one thing that drags Sable down for me is the occasional but major glitches and technical problems. Sometimes this happens, which can really take you out of the experience. Audio can get choppy, menus can get confused, making it hard to use. Pebble eyes are oddly rare to catch for many people. Camera's super stiff on keyboard, but then smooth on controller for some reason. I'm glad I played with the controller the whole time. Uh, frame rate crashes into the low digits sometimes. Color Calling your bike sometimes doesn't work, which can be a really fucking annoying if it's far away. And all of this can be dealt with in some way, so it, I mean, f fine, but it annoyed me too much to really overlook. The quests in writing got me to push past the problems to complete almost every single quest I could find. They're the main way Sable learns about the world and herself through these neat scenarios. You read her, like, thoughts and vivid descriptions on what's going on, which can say a lot about her and is overall pretty fun to read. Every quest being equally important, what the fuck's up with my voice? Every quest being equally important means talking about them even lightly is a slight spoiler. I'll go over three very different ones I liked, so if you're gonna play it yourself, skip ahead now, on screen, timestamp, or with chapters. I'm not saying anything particularly interesting, just sharing what I liked and no more. It's not all deep introspective writing and stuff. This funny little creature, uh, it's pretty big actually, collects chum eggs you find scattered around the world to upgrade your climbing stamina. You just find chum eggs in little hidden spots and whatever. I found this super late into the game. It's pretty goofy overall and a lesson to Sable that the world has moments of silly joy, no matter how scary it can be. You find this dead worm in Odd Diary in the middle of nowhere. I uh, had to google what to do next. You're trapped inside of an unnerving fleshy mess with barely readable diary entries being the closest thing to company. You travel further and further, realizing that this thing is reacting to your presence, making eerie sounds, and the diary entries progress from interest in this worm to a consuming obsession. You get a mask at of a fucking worm head at the end, which has terrifying implications. But yes, you can choose it at the ending and it's really funny. After meeting a mysterious member of the Atomic Priesthood looking for someone called Lore, you're told to go find them by asking around towns across the map from each other. It's a lot, but deliberately meant to be one of the last quests you complete. Lore is a uh, poet, basically, trying to discover the right path to take in life, stuck between the creatively stifling but comfortable life with the priesthood, or perhaps something else, clearly mirroring Sable's journey. To figure out what to do next, they ask three thought-provoking questions about art and self-discovery. Sort of. I feel like the game itself is more asking you directly what conclusions you've come to during your time with it. The nice poetry in response helps to clarify your answers as well. I was just surprised to see the game take such a direct approach, but ceiling, see, uh, sorry, seeing these feelings discussed and put into words genuinely brought me comfort. This is my favorite quest in the game. I really liked it. Sable takes advantage of everything a game can use to create a pretty fun and beautifully presented time that also mirrors introspective thoughts during some of our most important but confusing parts of our lives. Creating your purpose and uncovering who you are is uniquely challenging and complicated for everyone, as it shows in different ways. 
It's absolutely got flaws, I understand some can't look past the simple slower gameplay and unignorable technical problems, but if there's anything to learn from Sable's success, it's that no matter what mask or what path you decide to take, perfection isn't required.